The European Union finances thousands of projects meant to improve the lives of citizens, from the cradle to the labour market and beyond. But how do we know that these funds are spent in the most effective way? At the European Commission's Joint Research Centre, a group of scientists evaluates these programmes using counterfactual impact evaluation methods. How do they work? Let's think about a possible situation. The European Union funds a training programme to help the unemployed find a job. They can choose to participate in this programme and learn a foreign language or improve their computer skills. How do we know that this training is effective? To measure the impact of the training we need to ask what would have happened to the participants had they not taken the training? This is the counterfactual question. In a first scenario, we could compare the employment status of the participants before and some time after the training. What if most of them find a job? Can we say that the programme was successful? No. Why? Maybe they would have found a job anyway, because the economy was growing and there were more jobs available. Consider a second scenario, where we compare the employment status of those who participated in the training with those who did not. Can we do this? Yes, but this comparison would be misleading. Why? Because people who decided to participate in the training might have a higher level of education compared to people who decided not to. If they find a job, we don't know if this is due to the training or their higher level of education. This creates a bias known as selection bias. One solution for the selection bias problem is to conduct a randomized control trial. How does it work? Let's say there are 1,000 people who want to participate, but there are only 500 places. We flip a coin and choose who among the 1,000 volunteers will participate and who will not. This is called randomization. Randomization ensures that the two groups are statistically similar in terms of age or education and the only difference is participation in the training program. After the training, we compare the employment status of the two groups and estimate the effect of the program. This is the gold standard. Unfortunately, this cannot always be applied because of ethical issues. We cannot force people to participate, but also because of other concerns, like costs and proper planning. What else can we do? Quasi-experiments, where participation into training is not randomly assigned, but statistical methods are used to mimic randomization. One method is matching. In this case, data may come from a survey where for each individual in the sample, we know the gender, age, education level, participation in a training program, and so on. We match each participant with a non-participant who has the same age, gender, education level, and the only difference between the two is participation in the training. Then for each pair, we compute the difference in the employment status, and the average of all these differences gives us the impact of the training program. Matching is one of the several methods that are used to determine if a program is successful. Which method to choose is not a simple task. Scientists at the Joint Research Centre advise European member states on the best method to use for each specific case. Moreover, they research the design of new and more efficient methods also by partnering with international organisations. This is the purpose of counterfactual impact evaluation, to ensure that European Union funds are making a difference in people's lives. Counterfactual impact evaluation is making sure that European investments are the most effective.